Hello, I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Welcome, and I'm thankful that you could uh, join us for another segment. We're going to be talking with Dr. Asit Parikh today. He's uh, head of the gastrointestinal therapeutic area at Takeda Pharmaceutical Company, and he's joining us to talk about the 15th Congress of European Crohn's and Colitis Organization from the Phase 3 Visible 2 clinical trial that um, discusses the efficacy and safety of um, some subcutaneous treatments with Entivio for uh, severe Crohn's disease. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning, Dr. Parikh. Thanks, Neil. My pleasure. Now, um, I did mention that you are uh, at um, Takeda Pharmaceuticals. Uh, what is your role there as SVP, and um, what is a little bit of your background? Sure, sure, Neil. So I'm um, the head of the gastroenterology therapeutic area unit at Takeda, and uh, I have been here for a number of years. Um, what I do is I oversee the research and development of our GI compounds, we have a host of them across multiple areas, including uh, gut inflammation, gut motility, and liver disease. And my background is as a physician scientist. I um, uh, am board certified in gastroenterology and still have a very limited uh, practice uh, in the state of Massachusetts. Now, we're going to talk today about uh, Crohn's disease. What is Crohn's disease and what causes it? So Crohn's is actually a complex disease of the immune system. You know, all of us are constantly living with exposure to the environment through our skin and also through our intestinal tract. And the immune system of the gut is there to help us, you know, sort of keep the bad things at bay, if you will. So the gut immune system is actually the largest component of the immune system. And normally when it's in check, you know, it is sort of you know, in a really, really kind of delicate equilibrium. So if you get infected with something, you get some food poisoning, this, that, the immune system can quickly react, eliminate the bad guys, if you will, and, um, and, uh, and do its job. And, and, so, and then kind of go back to that normal equilibrium that I mentioned. But in Crohn's disease, um, with, what you have is an immune system that is revved up and starts responding to stimuli that it shouldn't be responding to. Crohn's can affect any part of the, of the intestinal tract from the mouth all the way to the anus. And it causes a patchy ulceration, thickening the tissue, and causing symptoms like diarrhea, bleeding, abdominal pain. In severe forms, you can imagine that when this tissue that's not supposed to be inflamed is chronically inflamed, you can have narrowing of the tissue, known as strictures, and you can end up with abscesses or infections around the areas that are chronically inflamed. These sometimes necessitate hospitalization with IV fluids, antibiotics, bowel rest, and in extreme cases, also surgery. Wow. Now, we're going to talk about uh, Intivio today and a, a study that um, addresses Crohn's disease and how it can be treated um, with Intivio. What exactly is the, uh, the visible clinical trial program? Sure. So, you know, before I get into visible, maybe I just a couple lines uh, around, um, you know, what uh, biologic therapy has done uh, to treat Crohn's disease. So, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, you know, it's a, a chronic illness. It um, has a genetic component, may have an environmental component, but it's not so simple as just sort of diet or environment or genetics. It's a, it's a, polygenic or multiple genes involved, you know, disorder um, that is very, very complex. And, you know, and once patients are diagnosed, they, they deal with the disorder, you know, their whole lives, they'll carry that diagnosis. And for that reason, people need to stay on drug therapy in most cases after they've been diagnosed, um, you know, indefinitely. So over the last 20 years or so, biologic therapies have really revolutionized the treatment of this disease. Uh, they now make, you know, certain possibilities of, you know, um, for patients that were previously almost unimaginable um, possible, and they've really reduced the complications of the disease. But that being said, there's still a large unmet need, and really it's still the minority of patients who, starting a new drug, the minority that will sort of still be in a completely healed state at the end of a year after starting a new therapy. So in Tibio, uh we... Came out with Intivio in 2014. 
Uh, it's currently approved in over 65 countries um, and came to the U.S. and Europe, uh, you know, roughly the same time in 2014. And, you know, that was an intravenous formulation. So the patient has to go into the doctor's office and, and um, get the infusion uh, after uh, for six week um, in induction period would be getting the infusion about every two months or so. What we aimed to do at the time was to ultimately get to a formulation where patients would then be able to self-administer. And that, that's what the visible trial is all about. So the, the visible program was seeking to get a subcutaneous form uh, so a patient would no longer need an IV, for example, and could inject themselves uh, with Intivio um, and every two weeks. And uh, as you could probably imagine, once patients get better, this gives them a tremendous amount of freedom because then they can go on, they can travel more easily, they can sort of not interrupt their work schedule um, to spend you know, a few hours getting to the doctor's office, their infusion and getting home, et cetera. And so, so that's what the Visible program is all about. Earlier, uh, last year, we came out with results of Visible 1, and we now have, uh, at this past uh, European Congress of uh, Crohn's and Colitis, uh, the results of Visible 2, which was around develop it, development of Intivio for Crohn's disease. So what, um, what is kind of a cross-section of the uh, patients that were involved in uh, Visible 2? Well, you know, the, the patients that were involved in Visible 2 are very similar to the ones for whom the IV uh, formulation uh, was approved uh, a number of years ago, and, and so let me describe that. So these patients were uh, ra ranged in age from 18 to 80, and they all carried a diagnosis of moderate to severely active Crohn's. Now, as I mentioned, Crohn's can involve any part of the GI tract, but the most commonly involved areas are the end of the small intestine, uh, known as the ileum, and also the large intestine, uh, known as the colon. So patients would have had to have ileal disease, colonic disease, or both. Um, and the, the disease had to be established for at least three months. The diagnosis had to be held for at least three months and had to be validated through clinical and endoscopic um, uh, parameters as well as a, a tissue or pathologic uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So these are pretty standard inclusion criteria for biologics uh, trials in Crohn's disease. Well, what was the uh, the efficacy results and, and a little bit about the uh, the safety and side effects? Sure. So, you know, um, so the, the top line is that the efficacy results allowed us to demonstrate that the drug is as active in maintenance as the currently approved formulation. So, um, and, and I'll go through those results uh, in a second. So initially, the way the program is set up is that all patients, they get when they're when they're quite sick, they come in, you know, if they're going to go on this. They'll start with the same IV uh, dosing that we currently have approved. So they would get uh, doses at weeks zero uh, and two and six. And so, uh, and then they would go on to be randomized. Um, I'm sorry, at week zero and two, and they'd go on to be randomized at week six to either a subcutaneous um, antivio or to a placebo. And, and what the results showed is that the primary endpoint of clinical remission, that is uh, a, a, a well-accepted uh, standard um, endpoint for Crohn's disease, the clinical remission uh, defined by a Crohn's disease activity index score of 150 or lower was met by 48% of those who were randomized to Intivio and by 34% of those who were randomized to placebo. And this difference of about 14% had a strongly significant p-value and is consistent with what we had observed with uh, the IV formulation of Intibio as well as many, many other biologics that are approved. So needless to say, I, I think that that impact on the primary endpoint, I think, uh, helped us sort of uh, establish the efficacy and will form the basis of the, the regulatory submissions that we've made uh, after that. We also looked at a number of other endpoints. We looked at uh, uh, enhanced clinical response, which is defined as a 100-point drop in Crohn's disease activity index. We looked at corticosteroid-free remission. Patients with Crohn's disease before biologic therapies were often on steroids for long periods of time. And so the difference uh, today is that, you know, effective drugs help these patients get off of steroids. 
and therefore avoid many of the side effects that uh, you could experience with them. So we, we looked at that as well. And then we also looked at clinical remission in uh, TNF-naive patients. Because of the way the study did, was done. Sorry, go ahead, Neil, please. Go ahead. No, because of the way the study was done, go with Because of the way the study was done, yeah. So we, have, uh, we had a trend on the first secondary endpoint of enhanced response. The numbers were 52% in those randomized to Intivio and 45% um, uh, randomized to placebo. This was not statistic, statistically significant. So we couldn't test additional endpoints after that. However, we could describe the numbers that were seen. And um, for example, corticosteroid free remission was particularly impressive with 45% of patients who uh, were on Intivio being able to stop corticosteroids, whereas only 18% of those on placebo were able uh, to stop corticosteroids. Where can, um, where can we get some more information about the study and about Intivio? Well, we um, did present these results at the European uh, Crohn's and Colitis um, uh, uh, Foundation. Um, and so those are available online through the Congress website. Um, there's also further in, in information on the Visible 2 study, as well as the criteria uh, of the patients who were included in that study on the clinic, clinicaltrials.gov website. So it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash clinicaltrials.gov. And uh, one could look visible too in that. Great. Dr. Parikh, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Lots of great information. Thank you, Neil. It was a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Esit Parikh. Uh, transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.